I'm excited because we're gonna be jumping into a comprehensive review of the new School of PE review material just unleashed for all of you studying for the civil PE exam in the computer-based testing format. Whether you're a student gearing up for the professional exam or you're a seasoned engineer looking to sharpen their skills, there is something in here for everyone, no matter the skill level. And the best part, in my opinion, is that it is jam-packed with real life examples. And I mean, come on, you know me, you know this channel. We are all about linking the theory that we learn in school with real life application as an engineer. Both volumes include exam tips, civil engineering definitions, and example problems that are in alignment with the computer-based testing format of the civil PE exam. There's a big emphasis that I'm putting on the computer-based testing portion of that. There's not a lot of literature out now that is in alignment with the new updates that the NCES made to the testing procedure. I think it was back in 2022, remember we went from paper-based testing to computer-based testing with new formatting, new types of questions, new ways that you can answer questions instead of just pure multiple choice. So the School of PE took the initiative and revamped their literature to better be in alignment with those testing procedures. Let's start simple with the practice exam and solutions. I think we all know what this type of study guide is. It is simply mimicking the uh, exam that you would find on test day and giving you a chance to take a practice run at it. As I looked through the exam, I was happy to see that there was a freshness of material. Um, I had gotten my hands on several iterations of exams over the years in the past and noticed a, uh, a connection between all of them. They're just recycling of the same problems. Um, so I wasn't really getting that huge additional benefit of each problem, but these really look like they have been reconstructed um, to get you ready again for that computer-based testing application. As you flip through the pages and you get past the first 80 example problems, you then find all of the solutions for those 80 problems, step-by-step step, giving figures and uh, being very clear with how they go about deriving those solutions. Now, you may have taken the practice exam and you've studied the solutions and you're feeling confident, but what else could you do? Well, the School of PE has thought of this and taken the next step to help you continue building your confidence and building your knowledge of the built environment for your PE exam. But how? Well, check this out. They've introduced what's called the Practice Portal Pro, which contains a bank of practice problems and solutions that closely mimic the NCES's computer-based testing experience. If you do want to utilize this tool, all you have to do is download the free Total AR app and scan your barcode in your practice exam in order to get access. Overall, this vibe is kind of giving me like the SAT prep back in the day for me, at least where you had your big, huge manual that you were going over, you know, practice problems for the SATs or the ACTs, but they started to unroll those uh, online programs where you could get a, you know, a daily SAT problem or ACT problem to, to continuously test yourself outside of just the physical limitations of the reference menu that you had. This is exactly that feeling that I'm getting here, which I'm really excited about because again, the more practice problems, the better in my opinion. So check it out. All right, next, here's the pros and cons of both review guides, in my opinion. Let's start with the pros. Number one, having a colored guide is so critical and something that I didn't even realize I was missing out on. Traditional black and white texts are just inherently at a disadvantage to colored text because there's so much more information that can be conveyed or uh, more complex topics can be broken down more simplistically with the use of color. Both of these manuals are full color, um, really, really high quality. And this is something that you see was mimicked by like uh, the ACI 318, their newest edition has transferred to a color, um, which again has kind of, at least in my opinion, in my own professional career has brought light and clarity to certain topics that I was a little hazy on before. So big props for the color. Number two, the clarity with which the information they're providing in these manuals versus what is provided in the NCES PE Civil Reference Handbook is very, very clear. When I see equations or text within the School of PE manuals that are blue, that indicates that that information has been pulled from the reference manual from the NCES document. 
Now that it's converted to computer-based testing format and you can't just bring whatever you want with you to the exam, it's critical to understand what is going to be provided to you by the NCES. So while these are paper documents um, provided by the School of PE, they at least are very clear with letting you know what information you're gonna to need to retain in your head versus what's going to be available to you on the exam. So big props to them for that. They were very clear with that. Number three on the pro list, tips. And what I love most about these is for the most part, they are grounded in real world application. And what I mean by that is that it's information that you would learn from your coworker or your principal or an experienced engineer that you're working under, not just through a textbook. One great tip that I saw that is really crucial to the PE exam, because this is a, a trick that ever so often is used on the exam, is in a practice example, they told you, hey, you do not need to apply a fee factor for your moment capacity because the example problem asks for nominal moment capacity where fee is not included. But if you were to be asked for design moment capacity, then you would include fee. But for all of us in the real world, you always apply fee to all of your designs. I can't think of a situation where you wouldn't do that, but on a test where you're being very specific and literal, sometimes they can trip you up there with nominal capacities and design capacities. I even saw that studying for my SE exam. So that was captured in a tip to help the studier remember and ingrain that information. Just really small, but really powerful bits of info like that are scattered throughout the text that I'm seeing. And I really like that. The next thing I love is that they talk on a topic and then they instantly follow it up with a couple of example problems to help solidify the information that they just spoke on. This is something I will admit I see in a lot of study text, but nonetheless, I think it's really effective. So why stray from something that already works really well? And again, as you mix in colored figures along with tips every once in a while, it just creates a whole new enhanced experience of study. Additionally, most of the equations that I see in these guides have references right next to them that tell you which material code those equations come from, as well as the location within the material code that those equations are located. It has all of your conversion tables in here. You have your engineering economics tables in here. You have your moment shear and deflection charts and something cool, they also include indeterminate beams as well, which is, which is pretty nice. So to me, the School of PE's review guide is more than just something you're going to be using during your studies. It's something that you're going to hang on to and be referencing throughout your career, hopefully. And last but not least on my pro list, at the beginning of each chapter, you have your standard table of contents. But right after that, you have what's called an exam guide. This condenses that table of contents into the key items that you should be studying in preparation for your exam. Then below that, you have the anticipated number of questions that you should expect to see on the civil PE exam. This is really clutch because it's taking the information provided by the NCES on their website and dumping it into your exam prep literature. Now the cons, or I should say just the singular con in my opinion. The layout of information was really different than what I was used to um, when I studied for the civil PE exam. And to make sure I wasn't misremembering, I grabbed my old civil engineering reference manual. Yes, I still have it. And went through those chapters in comparison to the School of PE's chapters. And there is a noticeable difference. Now there's a lot of reasons that this could be. One is that the School of PE just feels that this layout is a better representation of the new format of the exam. And then additionally, I'm more used to the setup where if I encounter a problem and say it's concrete, then I identify that material and then I head to the appropriate section in the reference manual that is all concrete or all steel or all geotechnical or all you know wastewater and hydrology. It was broken up into those type of generic sections where in here, there seems to be a more refined splitting up of information. All concrete is not located in a specific concrete chapter. There are bits of concrete information kind of spread throughout in different chapters. I call this a con because to keep it simplistic in my head, once I was done with the concrete section back in my reference manual, I knew that concrete really wouldn't be 
um, a topic that I would be seeing anymore. So everything in that chapter I had studied, I had learned, and now I could put that to rest and move on to the next section. Whereas here, you will continuously get you know, new bouts of information on concrete on a specific section or a specific application. So I couldn't just turn my brain off, I guess you could say, to concrete to move on to something else. I, this seems more fluid, which is not really the con side of things. It is just for me. I enjoyed moving material to material rather than concepts across multiple materials. But let me know in the comments down below if you think otherwise. Oh, and if you're still hanging out, here's a little tip for you. Something that I've repeatedly been questioned before on my channel is to which methodology do I use for the design of wood or masonry or steel for the PE exam? Which one will they ask me? LRFD, ASD? How am I supposed to know? Am I supposed to know both? Well, there's information within these manuals that answered those questions specifically. So if that is something of major concern to you, that alone right there may be a reason to pick these up for yourself. And there you go, review complete. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any additional questions about the review guide, about anything that I brought up, I'd be happy to answer. And until next time, this is Rich with Team Kesteva. Peace.